garden of Le Jardin. Now, this is a late spring session. Uh, we're closing the Memorial Day and it's been very warm. And right now, we just finished the garden and we're expecting 90, uh, 90 degree temperature sometime this afternoon and for a couple of days and then it's going to drop again. But the nights are basically in the 55 to 70 degree temperature range, which is great for your tomatoes because once they go below 55, they may lose their flowers and it's starting all over again. So it's been a beautiful weekend and we finally finished. Right now I'm in the shade because we finished this morning and the temperatures were in the 80s, which comfortable with a slight breeze. But now you can feel the temperature and some of the humidity coming in. So we're taking, we're being relaxed here. We're taking it easy. We've got plenty. Make sure you have water. And I put some suntan lotion on uh, to be careful. And I'll be wearing the hat out in the sun. So just be careful in the warm days of summer, especially June and July, because the farmer's down that says it's going to be a very brutal type temperature situation. Uh, come this summer. So just be careful. And basically, you're out in the garden now, uh, but you don't want to get an injury while you're gardening, you're trying to lift and trying to rake for two or three hours. But gardening is good for you. It reduces the stress, it relaxes you, and it's a great workout. But before you begin, try to do some stretching, uh, like, or bending over a couple of times, trying to touch your toes. Do some squats because if what you're finding, you're, you're squatting for long periods of time, then when you try to get up, it really hurts, especially for those who are getting older. So just be careful. Uh, and also pace yourself. Don't try to do uh, squatting and putting beans in uh, for two to three hours or weeding for two or three hours bent over. Go for a 20 to 30 minute uh, break or stop doing what you're doing, take a break for five or 10 minutes, and then from there, go on to a different project where you may be shoveling, making holes for your tomatoes, and you're, you're pushing in, you're standing up straight, and you're doing a different type of job for 30 minutes. And then you can go back to another uh, routine, like if you're doing uh, separation of your, some of your perennials, that may be good for you. But take precautions when you're doing gardening, and especially with the equipment of gardening. The, the, all the cultivators now and weed trimmers uh, are battery operated and some of them come with straps. Put the straps on the units and put the straps on your arm and rotate from left to right times to carry the weight so you're not holding and carrying that weight around for 30 to 40 minutes. Share that weight for both shoulders. Now, again, like I said, Make sure you bring bottles of water, especially when the temperatures is really up there in the 80s and 90s with high humidity. You're going to need this water and wear the appropriate sun coating anywhere from, well, I've seen it as high as 50 uh, H, uh, H uh, factor for the uh, suntan lotion. But 30 to 35, even 40 is good. And you use that. And if you're sweating quite a bit, Make sure you dry yourself off and put some new coating on of the suntan lotion. Now, we've finished the garden. We planted our tomatoes. We have leeks. We have celery. We have uh, basil from what I see here. We have peppers. We have acorn, acorn squash. And we also have uh, uh, sh uh, shallots. We're going to show in a few minutes. And we did some a chives transplant and we have some basil uh, and parsley and we have quite an assortment we're going to do a slight pick, overall pick, uh, view of that towards the end but we do so a lot of gardeners ask me what I like long-term bloomers what can what can you recommend especially in the bushes the bush type and the perennial now the bush type I like the butterfly bush which is a very good plant, uh, mid-July. Uh, the Rose of Sharon goes from August to probably about mid-September. And the regalia starts in late spring, early June, 
to into uh, probably July also. And there are other varieties. So when you're going through the nurseries, look at it and look at the seasons that they have a little tag on it and it'll say summer, midsummer to early fall or late summer to, all the way to frost. And so look at the plants and they'll ha even have a picture of the flowers of the plant and, it help, and it's very helpful at that plant. Now, some of the interesting, we also planted uh, intermixing uh, plants with the tomatoes, with basil and onions uh, to repel insects. And we also have a zinnia which seems to attract insects for pollinating the particular plants. And they have a wide variety. And they're from midsummer to frost. So that's another long-term uh, annual, that's a long-term annual that'll go for a long period of time. And they come in a rainbow of colors that you'll like. And they're coming from any range from 10 to 14 to even four feet tall. So you can have a staggered uh, series of uh, zinnias but again you have to look at the card and they'll tell you the maximum height of that particular zinnia at that time and the more you snip these flowers you can get more more flowers this continuously uh, uh, generates more flowers but you got to deadhead them or what we call deadheading is cutting the spent flowers and moving on and they come in a rainbow of color and you'll really enjoy it they were out in the garden and the temperatures has been in the 80s and the, and the sun is real torture at this point and they're expecting to be in the 90s tomorrow. Again, when you're out gardening in this type of weather, make sure you bring plenty of water with you and sunscreen on your arms and on any exposed part of your skin. Now, we also have pots here that we're going to be doing some uh, uh, container gardening. So that's being prepared. We're going to be g gathering some other uh, flowers and herbs to put into these containers and just push them out into the garden. But the important thing today is that we're after the tomatoes. Now as you can see this, this is a very good tomato. This is a beefsteak tomato. It's delicious, large, and it's, uh, it's sort of a deep red fruit that comes out. And it uh, grows in about 80 or 90 days. But what we're going to do to put them in the ground first what we're going to do is to remove the leaves in the lower portion for the five inches of the plant. So basically we're clearing away the lower portion of these leaves to prevent them from touching the ground. Once they touch the ground in these particular areas, uh, and probably in your garden you may have had some disease last year that may be in the soil, and these leaves touching the ground will have the viruses move into the uh, plant itself and then have the uh, plant come down into a virus situation and then sort of dying off. But right now, we're gonna plant that, this particular plant, almost up to here, and we're, show, we're gonna show you that later on. The next group of uh, tomatoes that we have is the Roma tomato, and they mature in about 73 days and uh, the fruit size is probably about the size of a silver dollar and uh, they, they are very tasty and again we're going to take uh, probably about two inches from the bottom and we're going to cut away the leaves making sure all the branches are gone get them cleaned off We also have some uh, tree operations that are going on. Those are the saws that you can hear in the background. Uh, some of the trees have been damaged during the uh, uh, winter months, and they're in here today to bring them down and almost pulverize them into sawdust. So we're moving along, just clipping the bottoms, clearing all the ones below the, the three inch mark. And like the previous one, we're going to put them in the ground almost halfway up the plant. Okay, we have cleaned all the plants up and making sure, and then we're going to plant these about halfway up in the ground and to make them grow bigger and shoot out more roots underground and give the plant more strength. All right, we dug our hole just to the 
size that we want. And what we're going to do now is fill in with the dirt up to that level that we talked about. Plus, I'm also going to plant something else. We also have on site a lot of uh, chives. This is the regular chives. And we also have what they call the garlic chives. And we're going to plant one next to each of the tomato. And they're sort of used for as a repellent against uh, insects. So we're going to put these in the ground. About one to two inches uh, from the stalk of the tomato. And they're going to continue covering it up. And we'll finish watering them after we plant the other tomatoes. So let's move on to another section of the garden. Well, we're finishing up the garden uh, for today. We finished planting all the tomatoes and we have a, quite a variety of them from Better Boy to Mortgage Lifters and Romas and some of these small uh, climbers of uh, tomatoes. Now we just finished up, up doing the onions. We're basically, we're taking the, we planted a row of chives that we broken up to uh, keep them going. And we also have onions that we're putting in. You make sure when you put them in, you put the bottom in, you'll see it looks like the roof to the bottom of it. And sometimes you may have the pointed uh, uh, portion there also. So basically what you're doing is putting it into the ground and we got a trench of about uh, anywhere from one to two inches, depending on the size of the bulb. And we just uh, come back and we just push the dirt in from side to side and we're finished. And uh, we'll water it later on, uh, probably within the next hour. And we'll make sure everything's covered and move on from there. Now let's talk about container gardening. There's been a lot of that this year. And I see driving around, a lot of people are putting their plants, even the tomato plants, into containers. Now the size of the container that you should be using is any, I would say, from five gallons, uh, similar to a drywall container, drywall material. Uh, those that come in large five gallons and even in the paint cans, but these are for big paint jobs and so forth. Clean them out. Let them dry out, and also you have to put holes in it. Take, turn the can over, get a large nail, and hammer holes anywhere from, say, with five to six uh, holes in the container in sort of a circular pattern on that. Now, there are very different types of containers. You have the cherry claw, uh, terracotta uh, and clay cots. Now, the, they're natural materials, and... But one interesting thing about it, they can dry out very quickly. So you, once you put your plants in, you have to monitor the container itself to see if it's too dry. And even the plant itself will tell you that it needs water. So what you have is a terry, and you also have sort of a, a plate underneath that will catch the drainage of the water. And that, that's very important, the drainage. So make sure you put those holes, or there are holes in the bottom of the... Uh, a terracotta materials and most of them do come with holes at that now we even have plastic containers and this one looks like a terracotta but it's a plastic container very lightweight again they already have their holes in them as you can see there's four holes in this and what we'll do sometimes we'll have a a little a little plate on the bottom which will hold some of that water and keep that plant moisture for a longer period of time but you could put carrots in here you could put uh, uh, basically lettuce you could put radishes in here even you could put small uh, tomatoes or micro tomatoes we'll talk about more of that about that later plus you can put marigolds around 
Uh, also, see them that you can move the this container around the lot or around the garden area or around your property where you may have a lot of sun. And one, one individual or one friend of mine had a, a problem that he had a lot of trees and a lot of shade and he loved to grow tomatoes. But the only area that was available that was sun that had six to eight hours of sun a day was the driveway. So what he did is that he got containers and he put them on a little platform with wheels on them so that he could actually move these around uh, into the sunny areas. And I would always joke with him and he would have about 15 or 20 of these uh, filled with tomatoes, different types of uh, tomatoes. And usually it was the determinate tomatoes. These determinate tomatoes only grow probably f uh, four to five feet the maximum. So you would uh, basically a five gallon tub on one of this you could have one big tomato four feet tall and what I would kid him about the, when he leaves in the morning he moves this around I says well when you leave the fleet is in and when you come back the fleet is out uh, in different corners and he also you he would grow his tomatoes early uh, during the year he would start his in uh, early early April and if there was any considered temperatures that were low or frost was considered he would just roll them into his garage and uh, keep them safe overnight instead of throwing a blanket over them. So he, he was very good at it. And he would do this every day. And let me tell you, at the come June, late uh, July and early August with his tomatoes, he was having early girls, beef, uh, beef masters, and others were anywhere from 55 to 75 days. Uh, by putting them in early, he was harvesting in, in late July and early August and well into the fall uh, season. And he got great tomatoes. Even the beef masters were as big as my hand that they were delicious. He cut it, gave me a slice, and it was the most delicious tomato you ever had. And you really enjoy it. Now, there are other types of uh, containers or wood containers that you uh, like redwood, cedar, and... Uh, which can can be expensive but you're going to need a, a support to keep it off the ground or to roll it around uh, so you need these in the open sun again the sun needs about the tomatoes need about six to eight hours of sun and there are other and then i've seen others that have become very de decorative they would have it in the wheelbarrows where you would drill holes into the metal good to consider it they would have uh, uh, in bags, plastic, not plastic bags. Well, plastic bags I've seen also. Also in cloth bags. You'll see them in the catalogs now that uh, instead of having pots, you have a bag of made of cloth where the water seeps through, but the plant grows. You put dirt in it, fill it up halfway, and, and the plant actually uh, will grow. To, uh, some tomatoes will have it uh, quite good. And it's very interesting. I mean, concrete blocks, the cinder blocks that has holes in them, fill that with dirt and put some plants in it and it will grow. Cast iron will do. And wheelbarrows, you, but again, you have to put, uh, and even, uh, you got to put holes in these to give drainage. And even garbage pails, the small garbage pails uh, can also be used. They're very shiny and lumen type and uh, they have a lot of heat. But note, drainage is an important part and also monitoring for that. And if you want to move them around, you can get the smaller containers so you can just pick up and move, or you can get the, frankly, you can actually buy these at some of the nurseries. And a good time to do that is after the growing season, late June and early July, where these uh, nurseries will have sales and you can pick up a lot of good uh, material uh, for next year's garden. So, all right. Let's move on to the next aspects of this. Uh, what would be the benefits of container gardening? We talked about the types of containers, different varieties from that we've talked about, plastic and plastic bags and five gallon containers. We talked the size of it and so forth. What are the benefits of the container gardening? Well, basically, if you have a small space and you can't put a garden in, you can use this. If you live in an apartment complex, uh, you may have a balcony. You could probably put five or six of these five gallon containers with four or five tomato plants. 
and make it very easy and basically they're it's they're portable you can move them around on the balcony or even in the backyard of small backyard that you don't have enough space you only have maybe a four by uh, four by eight area that you could use for a garden but you don't want to tear up the grass you can have these containers uh, mobile units like my friend has with the uh, property that he has it's heavily shaded so he can move these around into the sunny area when he leaves for work in the morning and they're out there for a good six to eight hours when he comes home he moves the fleet in to the shaded area and have it really we're very good there also there you it's convenient you can just go out onto the patio or just go look at it and you can do a, a quick look to see how your plants are doing or even a quick weeding if some of the weeds got on it's a quick chest and the harvesting is easier too because they're all in those containers and you move them over now you don't need big containers you can do use small containers uh, and that, that's the question you can say well what how big should these tomatoes be now you can use the cherry type tomatoes that you want aroma tomatoes are good and or you can do and it, you can do different other types of tomatoes, colored yellow tomatoes, and these are small tomatoes that you can use. But the seedlings or seeds is always the question, should I grow them by seed or seedling? Well, if you grow them by seedlings, you get a six pack and they're already four or five inches, you have instant gratification. You have five containers with five tomato plants already ready to go, probably in one or two hours, just putting the, the dirt into the pots, making sure they have holes, and putting the plant in and if you want to put a pole in for support down the line it would be perfect you're all set now you can get you can get smaller plants uh, in smaller containers where a container like this that you have you could put in two what they call micro tomatoes they only grow about 10 inches which are basically about this and they have numerous, uh, some of them are very prolific in their tomatoes, of small tomatoes. These are uh, very small, uh, not about the size of a quarter tomatoes that you have on this. You can have two of them in here. And the difference they have is basically they have the Micro Tom, the Red Robin, and the Tiny Tim. The Tiny Tim has grown a number of times and they, they grow just about 12 inches. And I would say you could probably get 15 to 20 uh, onions, not onions, but tomatoes off that plant. And if you put two in this particular type of pot, that's 40 or 50 types of uh, tomatoes you can get from one plant. And if you have five or six of them, you can give some to your neighbor uh, at that point. So those are the benefits of containers. Now there's always been a question of types of plants to be put in the shade area. Now we have on the property here some shaded areas. Uh, some are very heavily sh uh, shaded. And what we've done, we have uh, put in hosta plants, H-O-S-T-A plants. And they come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and coloring. Uh, standard uh, hostas are sort of a green or even a bluish green. The size from any what they call the miniature hosta were probably just about about a foot wide and they have variegated or colored type where you may have white stripes on the hosta you may have yellow stripes and you may have sort of a bluish tinge to some of this hosta and they give quite an attraction in the shade and they also give off certain types of flowers either white uh, or sort of a bluish tinge uh, flowers on a probably a two to three foot stem that will come right up out of uh, above the hosta for maybe for two maybe three the weeks but you can have them in a series they'll show you when they flowering on that tag when you buy the plant and some will, will flower in early June some in uh, late June mid July and even in August uh, that they'll send up flowers at this point now the size like I said of a foot wide uh, Mike Festa had a, quite a hosta garden uh, a few years back and when I visited him one day he was standing next to one that was actually four feet tall and five feet wide. That was the entire plant. It had numerous leaves on it and the leaves were about two to three feet 
in size. I mean, it was gigantic. It took up a good portion of the garden, but he, he had a, a, a big area in shade, so he actually put in different varieties of uh, hostas just to see the effect, and they were quite an effect in that area. Now, what we have here, we have white stripe uh, hostas, and we also have yellow stripe hostas, Jay, and we have different sizes, and they make a good uh, impact uh, in the shaded area. Now we also, our biggest problem sometimes will be with the slugs. And we have different ways of trying to attract the slugs away from the hosta plant. And we do our, you might say, early morning rounds and see if you go early in the morning, you'll see the slugs attached to the particular bait that we've been using. Or wood, sometimes we'll take the wood and wet it and face it down and, and the slugs like the wet wood and they'll attach themselves to the wood and you turn it over and you can scrape them off into a container and dispose of them off site. So those are with different ways that we control uh, a particular uh, pest in the hosta area. There are other varieties, there are what they call sluggo, but that's the sort of a, uh, an insecticide and if you have children's and animals around, you really don't want that. And you really want to put out the, the, the natural type ones that we're going to show in a few minutes. And they're easier to work with. And they're probably, and the slugs really love it. It's, it's an, an alternative to using uh, insecticides or pesticide to eliminate this particular type of pest. Now, we're going to take a tour of the garden. We're going to show the shallots. We planted shallots in. We planted uh, onions. Uh, we trimmed some of the containers. We put containers in. We're going to show what we planted. A lot of the plants, because of the temperature uh, that's out there, are on the ground. I mean, lettuce uh, and, uh, let's see, the parsley are sort of bent over. The tomatoes look good because they went in yesterday and we watered them uh, lately, last night. Uh, late uh, late afternoon and they're sort of perked up. We're going to be waiting for another probably uh, two to three hours here. It's going to be brutal hot sun. So uh, the plants are, are sort of look good, but the onions and the uh, we have the other types of peppers that we put. They look good and they're going to uh, work out very well. So we're going to take a tour of that. And after we take your tour, we're going to show uh, this. We show the, the spring flowers that we've seen as we're walking around the community. Uh, the tulips are fantastic this year. Daffodils, the grape hyacinths, also the uh, phlox and, and uh, mid uh, mid spring, and they're sort of fading now. At now, the lilacs were in full blooms. The purples and the uh, whites. Uh, sort of a predominant in the Melrose area. And also the magnolias uh, came out and they were great this year. But there seems to be a problem with the azaleas and some of the other types of plants that bloomed last year, but this year uh, they sort of were on and off of either blooming or not blooming at all. And from what they're saying is because of the warm winter we had, they didn't have time to climatize to the cold weather and then in February when we had the negative numbers that lasted for a couple of weeks the plants were affected and probably the flowers were hurt at that time and that's what they're blaming the problem of the poor response or poor showing of the azaleas and some rhododendrons at that at this time so let's move on let's go on a tour let's look at the garden let's see the flowers and we'll come back later
Well, I hope you enjoyed your tour. I hope you enjoy our uh, discussion concerning containers. Uh, that closes it for today. We'll be back in a couple of months for the summer program and see what the results are of the garden. And uh, this is Bob Boissel from Le Jardin, the garden. <laughs>